Yo, what's going on today? I really want to talk a little bit about aerial equipment and how uh, artists can use those pieces of equipment to do larger murals, um, installation, things like that. Because as we grow as an artist, you know, our work gets bigger. And sometimes that's on a wall that is too tall for a ladder. So we need to rent pieces of equipment to sort of get to the heights that we want. So if you check out the rest of my YouTube or on my Instagram, you'll be able to see that I do a lot of work with large scale equipment so that I'm able to reach uh, heights that I can't with a ladder. And coming from the lens of an artist, I'm just going to sort of give you the perspective of you know, what you'll run into and what you need to know to sort of demystify sort of the, uh, I guess, the idea of renting and using this piece of equipment. So let's get started. So the first thing you really need to know is that there's a ton of different types of, you know, aerial equipment. So you have boom lifts, scissor lifts, they're gas powered, diesel powered, they're electric indoors as well as outdoors. So you have a ton of different types of combination of these lifts that you can sort of choose from. It's up to you to figure out what your project is and what piece of equipment is best for that project. Something indoors will not require a lift made for the outdoor. Something that's on a tight sidewalk will not require something that's sort of super wide and super large. So you have to figure out what type of project you have and your surroundings um, that can sort of fit that piece of equipment. You know, some of the equipment is really heavy. I've been sort of on pieces of equipment that have cracked sidewalks because it's so heavy. And that's something I have to think about sometimes when renting pieces of equipment like this. So understanding your sort of project and the surroundings can help you understand what type of equipment uh, you need. You can also reach out to the rental company to actually say, hey, can you come down to my wall or my project site and uh, consult me on what type of equipment to use? They're always willing to do that, especially when you're going to them to rent the piece of equipment because they want you to be successful as well. Next is cost. Usually there's four different things that are built into the cost of the equipment. The cost of the rental itself, and that depends on the type of equipment you're getting. Sometimes when you use are renting a small lift, you know, that could be 300, 400, sometimes $500 versus renting, you know, a larger piece of equipment which may be in the thousands. Uh, so that's like one element of how they sort of build into the cost. The second element to pricing is basically the time frame. How long are you using it? Because these pieces of equipment are usually um, sort of uh, utilized on construction sites, the longer you use it, the better the discount. So if you're using it for maybe one to two days, you know, it's gonna be really expensive. If you're using it over the course of the week, you know, there's only a slight increase in the rental cost, so per day. And if you're using it for two weeks, you know, it only goes up just a little bit more. And if you use it for a month, you know, it only goes up slightly. So a lot of times I'll rent a piece of equipment and sort of make sure that I have like a two week long rental or a month long rental because the difference is sort of uh, negligible and it's sort of gives me a lot of buffer you know if i know i can get the project done in maybe a week or six days i'll just make sure i just do uh the two week long rental because the difference between one week and two week is not as much as you know just renting it for that day so in short the longer you rent it the better the discount the third element of sort of the pricing is the insurance so you always have to have that insurance um, usually you can pay for that during the rental or sometimes when you have that built into your own policy you can have it waived but you need to have that insurance make sure you have it because these are uh, huge pieces of equipment that cost a lot and you don't want to be liable for anything so make sure you get that insurance and lastly is the transportation cost and that is basically paying for the pickup and the drop off of the piece of equipment um, I don't have a truck bed that large that can carry something like that so you're paying for them to sort of pick it up and drop it off one of the best things that you can really do is always just have a connection when it comes to 
a lot of the rentals um, that you know about. So having that plug that you can sort of tap into and sort of talk to them about the projects that you're working on and have them familiar with your work or sort of the project timelines that you're going through because having someone sort of in the rental company or that rental sort of um, industry can really help out when it comes to sort of getting discounts, when it comes to sort of getting pieces of equipment delivered on a last minute project or you know anything like that, you really wanna make sure you have a plug. My guy is Carson from Equipment Share. Basically, I've been using him um, for the past couple of months and he's been really good. So I'll make sure I have his contact in the description uh, because I believe they're all over the country as well. But having a plug is really great, mainly because like I said, it helps with the discounts. It helps when you know you have a project and you need a piece of equipment last minute or you need to assess a job site so you know when they're when they know you they easily able to come out and say hey this is exactly what you need i can give you a discount or if you're doing multiple projects let's do a discount on this this and this or you know you're doing a festival you're trying to put together a festival okay you're trying to rent uh, a number of pieces of equipment let's do a discount so it's really great to have a plug and a relationship with a rental company like that the next part is safety these are thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds so you have to prove that you can not only keep yourself safe but you can keep other people around you safe and that sort of crash into buildings and that sort of fall off cliffs and that sort of electrocute yourself because you're in the sky so you're around power lines so you have to prove that you are safe a lot of festivals and especially if you're working with developers and on construction sites you really have to prove that by getting a certificate so i got my certificate at certifymeonline.net it's basically sort of for anyone using aerial equipment, they can go there and take a course. And at the end of the course, you just take a test. And at the end of that, if you pass, you know, you get a certificate. And that is great when it comes to working for um, developers or on construction sites, putting up your artwork, because I do that a lot, or for many festivals, because now a lot of festivals are now requiring you to actually have a certificate um, to show that, you know, you're able to operate this piece of equipment safely. So I'll have that link in the description so you can go there, take the course, take the test and get your lift certificate. Because like I said, a lot of uh, mural festivals, a organizations, um, construction sites, if you're working, putting your artwork on construction sites or developers will require you to have a certificate. So make sure you do that. And lastly, don't feel intimidated about sort of getting into this space when you're sort of thinking about working larger. The best thing that you can do to sort of learn how to do um, or work with large scale equipment is by assisting other artists. When you assist other artists, you're able to learn from them how to use equipment like that. You're able to learn the controls and how sort of the nuances of the controls differ from sort of pieces of equipment to equipment. And you're sort of just able to get familiarized with sort of the process of renting it, you know, having it on the job site, how to keep it safe, things to look out for when you're in the air, how to sort of do your artwork or do an installation, but at the same time, operate a piece of equipment like that. And furthermore, the more projects that you have to where you're using, you know, large scale equipment, the better you are, the more familiar, the more comfortable you are. And in this space and you're able to sort of think of projects that are that are a lot larger so definitely like i said um get familiarized with it i'll have the link to my guy uh carson in the description and a link to the certificates website um certifymeonline.net so that you can get certified as well so make sure you like and subscribe the video so I can continue making more of these and helping you guys out when it comes to sort of getting into, you know, large scale art projects because I love doing this. So like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I make videos. Peace.